Hi, this is Matty Simmons, and this is where comedy happens. And it happens to be today about stand-up comedy, and we have two of the best female stand-up comics in the country, Alison Angram and Judy Tenuta. Before we go to them, I want to tell you I was playing chess with a friend of mine the other day, and suddenly he looked up and said to me, can we make this more interesting? So we stopped playing chess. Be right back. Hey, we're back at Comedy Happens, and we're back with a very special guest, Alison Angrone, the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the bitch from Little House on a Prairie. Everybody mm -hmm. remembers you so lovingly. <laughs> I know that you've written a book. Indeed. What? Tell me about it. Well, indeed, as you said, the bitch from the prairie. Okay, seven years on this show, and as I always say, people go into show business in the hopes that people will love them. This didn't quite work for me. I wound up playing the villain, and people hated me. The more famous I became, the more they hated me. So I did write my autobiography, Confessions of a Prairie Bitch, yeah. How I Survived Nellie Olson and Learned to Love Being Hated. And you do a show. I do, oh, and that's how weirdly the show started before the book. I started stand-up when I was like 15. And then a few years ago, I started my own one-woman show, Confessions of a Prairie Bitch, where I told all true stories from my life. Like what? Well, Tell me a funny one. Absolutely. See, growing up as an ex and being an ex-child star, it's the whole bizarre syndrome of being typecast. And um, I have really, over the last 40 years, been beaten, spit upon, and pelted with garbage. Oh. Like the Santa Claus Lane Hollywood Christmas That happens to me all the time. I never... I'm down. <laughs> and it was the Christmas break. It was... Serious was the height of the show. I was like 16, and I'm in a car, you know, doing the celebrity thing, the Christmas parade, and someone threw a McDonald's cup of orange soda at my oh. head. Got me right in the face. Thank God it wasn't a beer bottle. Uh, at least they could have picked a better restaurant. Right. I mean, it could have been something better. But, you know, it amazed me because the thing was more than half full. I mean, there was like a buck seventy-five of soda left. And when you go on stage, do people boo you or is... When I was younger, when I was in parades, they would. I would sometimes come out at a, a public appearance and they would say, Nelly, and the people would boo. Of course, then I would do like, you know, the wrestler thing and I was like into it. But now, luckily, you know, thank God for the internet and cable TV, I have all these venues where people can see the real me. Now they kind of like me. They, being the bitch is sort of popular, so now people are into it. Well, um, bitch, being a bitch and being a villain is, to me, as a producer, the hardest role in a movie or a television show. And you've got to have it's someone It's easy to like be that. nice and pleasant and sweet on camera, but being really honestly bitchy is tough. Well, and, and thank you, but that's it's true. The hero has to have someone to fight. I mean, Little House was right. all about the wonderful, good Lori Ingalls and her family, but right. what would she have done all day without Nellie Olsen to be horrible to her and give her something to overcome? Right. And, and people really got into the show because of that. And... Uh, and that's the thing, is that the typecasting, the craziness, and being called a bitch, my, my show became about that, how you live with that, and then people liked it so much, I did the book from it, so yeah. Well, you must have a lot of encounters with people who really think you're really a bitch. It's true, and you would think all these years later, but uh, no, it's still the case. I mean, I fairly recently was at an autograph show, and a woman actually walked up to the table, just looked at me and said, I forgive you, and walked out of the room. <laughs> She'd been holding this in for like That's 40 wonderful. years. This just rage against my character. And when you, and yeah, now you're doing a lot of stand-up. I and, am. All and what do you do stand basically in stand-up? Do you talk about that or do you talk about other things? A little of everything. I, go, I just did the uh, Rochester Fringe Festival in Rochester, uh -huh. New York, where I did that. And the, the one-woman show now, we have, we have video and photos. It's a whole like multimedia extravaganza. And I, I talk about, yes, that you, know, you people, you think I'm a bitch and this is how you treat me and fine. And then, yes, we have clips from Little House. But then we have clips from other things. And I talk about all like the terrible TV that one does in the 70s when you're on a show back then that you had to be a love boat and Fantasy Island. And I have clips from my horrible episode of Fantasy Island. Um, I talk about my family who are in show business. My dad actually worked for Liberace, and I have fabulous pictures of me with Liberace as a child and, and these kind of stories. It's quite well, fun. When you did the show, what was your favorite moment in the show? Can you remember? Yes, I think so. 
I have a favorite episode. And the crazy thing yeah. is, when I talk to people all over the world, this seems to be everyone's favorite episode, <laughs> is the one where um, I go down a hill in a wheelchair. I, I pretend to be paralyzed, and Laura finds out I'm faking and shoves me down the hill in a wheelchair into a pond. And it seems to be everyone's favorite, and it is mine too, because this isn't something you normally get to do. I mean, what other television show has 13-year-old girls going down a hill in a wheelchair. I can't gone. think of any of them. No, no, <laughs> this is not something they normally make you do. No. And we have a, a friend of yours coming by. We do, we do. And, She's... and uh, we'll be back in a moment with our next guest. And we're back with Comedy happens, and the next guest is Judy Tenuta, playing hey! coming into the, to the strains of Beethoven's Fifth. Oh, not quite. As, <laughs> right, not as, quite. As played by the New York Symphonic and Judy Tenuta. Yes, thank you. I am the Aphrodite of the accordion, so <laughs> there you go. Oh, do stop. You, uh, do you play that on stage? Oh, yes, I, I really, it's my job to make people suffer. So, <laughs> <laughs> Allison knows. Uh, so, I, I, I even I'm say suffering. that. Oh, my God. Yes, I even say that. I go, uh, you know, if they if they give me a little trouble, I go, don't make me use this. <laughs> you know. That's torture. Uh, <laughs> I, I know that you are a, have toured with some of the great comedy artists. Yes. Tell me about some of them. Well, uh, first off, I want to talk about Joan Rivers because she was one of the first ones to mentor me. When her show first came on in 1986, she put me on her show right away. And that really helped me, really gave me visibility. And then I went on from there to do Letterman, who I like Joan better. Okay, and, um, and then I did Joan's show. She had a morning show as well, and I also did that. Then, after that, uh, uh, I, I was very excited because I did my uh, H first HBO special, Women, uh, with, um, I don't know, what was the name of it? <laughs> hey, so, oh, my I got it, I got it, Women of the Night. I had, I had a, a few of them. So. You know you've had too many HBO specials when you can't keep the title straight. Okay? Well, I, oh. no, I, I, I can keep them, I can keep yeah. them. You're women of the Night. What, uh, was the first one, and then at the same time, I had my commercials, Diet Dr. Pepper. I loved your Dr. Pepper commercials. Thank you, because uh, in the Diet Dr. Pepper commercials, they were like little mini movies, you know? And so like one of them is, I'm, I'm holding the bottle of Diet Dr. Pepper, and I say, you can't get a body like mine in a bottle unless you push real hard. <laughs> so. You know, anyway, that was a fun one, and there were three other ones, and it was, they are, they were made like, they were beautifully produced, so I was very honored to do well, that. What, what was the funniest joke on that show? Oh, I think I just told it, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, aside from that. No, oh, you're talking about on the Diet Dr. Pepper yes, commercials? Yes, yes. Oh, God, I, I have to, okay, one of them, I'm, um, uh, I, okay, so you see me, and I'm, 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 I look like I'm in this glorious, because uh, I, you know, I call myself the, the, the goddess. She is, she is a goddess. <laughs> <She's> a goddess. <laughs> and and uh, I go, oh, you know, when I, when I feel, uh, you know, I, I want to feel pampered and beautiful, I like to, and then you hear a horn honking real loud, and I stick my head out and I go, hey! It makes me feel like a woman! <laughs> you know, I say about diet, Dr. Pepper. Anyway. Uh, um, that's great. Uh, anyway, you have to... See, it's one of those things. Uh, you to toured with people. so many great people. Yeah. Uh, aside from being with Joan, who I have we always adore thought Joan. was one of the great... Joan was people. the groundbreaker with Phyllis Diller, yeah. I will say. Yes. How about and, George Carlin? Oh, I loved... Yeah, so that's what happened. I did, I did my... Uh, my uh, I, in fact... The night that my Women of the Night premiered, I was on, I just started my tour with George Carlin. Mm. So it was, I will not forget this because it was July of 1987 and we had just done a show. And I get a call from him in my hotel room after we did the show. We had a lot of fun. He was really a lot of fun, by the way, we, because we love doing voices. Like he'll say, Hey, Tenuta. Come over here and light my cigar. You know, and then I go, shut up, pig. You know, we had a lot of fun doing voices. 
And in fact, his manager would say, would you two shut up? And George says, no, we're having fun. So um, <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of fun doing that. But after uh, we had done our performance, that was in New York City, he says, hey, Jude, he calls me on my, in my room and he goes, oh, they have a review of, your, of, of the special. And you got a great review. I mean, so that was like that made you feel good. It, well, George Carlin, hello, you know. So that was like a it huge made you feel so good. You went out and played the accordion for two hours. No, no, <laughs> I didn't want to do that to him. No, no, I did not do that. I, I, I only played it in little spots where, like I said, where I've, it's like a punctuation. But I will say this: it's really weird. Wherever I go, people want to touch it. I've had people say, may I, that's, see, Allison yeah. likes to pet it. I'm allowed to touch it. Oh, I'm Allison to and, it and I are good pals, and so she can do that. Not just anyone can touch the squeeze box. That's right. She's always squeezing her box. you got to watch I, her. I am. I am. And, and by the way, I was in Hawaii and doing a show, and one guy, I was walking through to get onto the stage, and this guy starts kneeling down. Oh, goddess, may I kiss your squeeze box? <laughs> was, yeah, I know, I know. That, that was, <laughs> Inappropriate, but at the same time funny. But know. only bordering. No, never boring. Never no, boring. Not bordering. I, I hear it's... there's great news coming up that <laughs> on Hollywood Boulevard. For you. Well, actually, it's going to be in Las Vegas. Oh. On Las Vegas Walk of Stars. I, yes, I'm getting a star on my birthday, That's great. November seventh. So it's pretty exciting. I, I hope. I'm hoping I'm sandwiched in between Engelbert Humperdinck. And Wayne Newton, that could be cool. Oh, that right. Be good or it doesn't matter. Who's Two very that? funny people. Or or <laughs> Trini Lopez. I love them all. Trini. We would squat. Get next to Trini. I would like that. That'd be great. We'll be right back. Okay. With the funniest ladies in town. Hey. <laughs> We're back with Comedy Happens and Allison and Judy. Yes. Let's talk about how you got into stand up. Uh, Allison, how'd you decide to do stand up? She saw me! Yeah, right? I think she did for me when I was doing it. I started so freaking young. I was like 15, and my dad was managing comedians. Do you remember the Village Idiots? Do you remember like Mark Anzell and Peter Jurisic and those guys? Uh, John's Place, slightly like, Melrose yeah. and all that. Oh, I we didn't even know about that. We were down there, and they were at the Improv and the Comedy Store, and there was this comedy oh. group, and I was going to see them, and I actually started heckling a comic because, yeah, right, you know what I'm like. And he did the old, if you think this is so easy, you ought to try it. And I went, that, that's a good idea. He dared me. People shouldn't dare me to do things. And I was 15, and so I, but then I met with the, the, the Village Idiots, this comedy group, with these really good writers, and they said, well, if you really want to do this, we can put together an act and we can really do this. I totally did it on a dare, and then it wound up taking off, that's and I've been at it ever since. That's great. And How Judy? Start? What, I you started in? because I grew up in a family with a seven brothers, so oh. I didn't hear myself speak till I was 17. Uh, so <laughs> right out of high school, and then I went to, uh, majored in theater, and I said, oh, when you're on stage, guess what? People listen to you. Uh -huh. so, so I said, oh, I want to do this. So that's really how it happened. I, I, well, actually, no. I went to New York to try to be an actress, and then I go, oh, no. I, I don't want to be with 500 people trying to get a part. So uh, I, all my friends would say, oh, you drive us all nuts anyway doing your own act behind stage. So would you just do it? So I just came up with my own, do, and doing and my own thing. And, and my mother, I moved out when I was 18, and my mom goes, you're taking the accordion. And I go, mom, <laughs> mom, I outgrew it. She goes, shut up. You're taking the accordion. You'll thank me for it. And uh, she was too. right. Yes. I was right. Take the accordion. Who knows? She was right. And uh, let me do a quick round here. We, we do this every week. Favorites. First of all, who is your favorite female stand-up comic? It's fascinating. She brought, you know, we're talking about Joan, but you brought up Phyllis Diller. Yeah. I loved Phyllis Diller. Oh. I got to meet her. I got to work with her. Just an incredible woman, and she was someone who was actually stunningly beautiful in real life. She had like violet eyes, like Liz Taylor. She was gorgeous, but yeah. played this really obnoxious, crazy character yeah. on the stage because that was what you had to do. But she was an incredible woman, and she, she had a, a joke file that went to the Smithsonian for oh, God's sake. I know, and, amazing woman. and she's an amazing cook. 
She used to hold a, a party, she did. right? Right. She had a beautiful estate. And also, she was a great artist. She, oh, the she, painting! The painting she did a lot. Was she your, who was your favorite? Who? Well, I love Phyllis, of course. And you mentioned Joan. I, I, Joan. I mean, I have to go with Joan because Joan really did help me. She mentored me. Mm -hmm. She had me on her show. I gotta love her. And she, <laughs> Judy, get me a donut. <laughs> now, let me ask you a tougher question. Do you have a a favorite moment on on stage? Stand up. It's funny, we're laughing about like you know your best and your worst. One of one night I had it was one of my best nights comedically, and could have been close to one of the worst at the same time, and could have been even worse. I was in Texas, it was in a small town in Texas, and it was a late show. And one of the downsides of doing stand up is crazy drunk people. Ah. On the one hand, crazy drunk people will laugh at stuff, but on the other hand, crazy drunk people can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Why I love doing my one moment try I get in the theater, it's like less crazy drunk people. And they were very crazy and drunk in Texas. So they were having a high old time, but there was one guy in like, the front row was a little too drunk. And so he was doing a, and I'm, I'm, of course, making fun of him, going, yes, I remember when I had my first beer kind of thing. And I start picking on him. Well, the audience, they totally turn on him. They're totally on my side. We're all ragging on this idiot in the front row until finally he's, like, carried off by security. We go, ah, ha, 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 ha. And That's always fun. And then <laughs> afterwards, I find out that although in this town in Texas it's customary to check your weapons at the door, oh, at the boy. bar, nice. he had not. And was carrying a fully loaded pistol while oh. he was completely drunk and three feet away from oh, me. So I was like, oh, well, good to know. Yeah. I got lucky. And I got yeah. lucky. Yes, yes. What about your favorite or well, I, I, uh, most horrendous well, one? Well, well, I just think of this. Uh, I was doing my show at the, uh, 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 what's it on Sunset? Oh, God. The you know. Store or the Laugh Factory? Yeah, the big the big place that they, the, the I don't big know. Laugh that Dan, the one that Dan, listen to me. It's like, <laughs> listen, we, we would be great on a game show. Sounds like, <laughs> you know, um, it was uh, House of Blues. House of Blues. House of, of House Blues. Of blues. And... So I go, oh, in my uh, show, sometimes I go, oh, does anyone have gifts for the goddess? So all of a sudden, this guy, I don't know, it was a drag queen, so this is great. So I see, this guy was like seven feet tall, and a, a mini, uh, a vinyl black mini, oh, and wow. it, he looked beautiful in, in, in black hair. He just come, he's like seven feet tall, and I'm looking, I'm going, oh my God. So he starts coming up on stage, and then he just... He just kneels down. He just kneels down in front of me, and I go, "Oh, what's your name?" And he says, "Oh, moist towelette." <laughs> so, you know, I mean, that was a laugh. So it, it 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 was great. I mean, you know, I I that was oh that wasn't the worst moment, was it? I'm trying to think of what I what oh I got heckled in Canada. No, and you Canadians. And you're supposed to be polite. That's what I mean. I got oh, I was was so, heckling. It was so unexpected. You know, all of these polite people, and there was this big, fat, obviously he was a lumberjack, no offense, but he was like, yeah, I want to, you know, uh, yeah, why don't you talk about how fun it is here? And I said, oh, I love it in Canada. I love your uh, your national anthem. Oh, Canada, I love you for your ginger ale. And he goes, shut up. And I go, get over here, pig. And I just bring him up, and, and he got, I... You know, I kind of scared myself because this guy was... you do audience participation. You drag him up on stage. Yeah. That is dangerous, it's, man. This was dangerous, and but I, I had to shut him up because he wouldn't... He was talking about, yeah, I'm a, I like to, I like to cr climb trees and chop them down. Oh, okay, that's an accomplishment. Anyway, so he comes up, and then uh, he, I go, you must kneel before the goddess, and, and, and you know, and I just, I just lowered, I just pestered him, and finally he shut up. So she does make but, them kneel. You know, one of my best friends when you did the summer party for H Project Los Angeles, and I took you there. Oh yeah. Chris Bennett, one of my bestest friends at the project, he, it was his dream to kneel before you, oh. and we made that possible that night. I got him off, and he knelt before you. Sweet. Never got I mean, <laughs> that was, we had we had a lot of tortured, tortured him for hours on yeah. stage. Allison and I have done a few shows together too. I bet you don't remember when we did uh -oh. the one in uh, it was in San Diego. <gasps> and remember um, we the funders for animals and stuff. Yes, you and me. We was, oh my God, Leslie Jordan. Leslie, yes! Jordan. Yes! you and me. Leslie it was Jordan. so yeah, much fun. Awesome. They even phone. gave us a room to stay in. They did. Yes, they, we each had our own hotel rooms. We you were know, excited about that. Yeah, we, we don't often get them because you know you get nothing with comedians. I got a serious question. Yes. Uh, why I'm asking a serious question, I don't know. 
but it, it, it's appropriate right now because there's you know the women's march and what have you do you feel it was harder to get into stand-up comedy as a woman than it is for a man let, let you want to go first mm -hmm. yeah uh, I I had a lot of trouble as a man when I started. <laughs> you know, I, the Allison no, no, uh, no. Seriously, when I started, it was all male comics, and I I was a little bit lucky in Chicago. I that's where I grew up, and they were a little bit uh, uh, protective of me. Actually, what I had trouble with were club owners. Mm -hmm. Right? Am I? Hello? Guess what? We get paid for this, right? You know. So um, I I. The the comics were not, you know, giving me a tough time. It was the it was some of the club owners really. What about audience reaction? Do you think well, they were as ready to laugh? Uh, I well, you know, a I'm a little. A well, I I'm a little different. I think, so uh, you know, I'm kind of unique. So I I didn't a little really, wacky. I didn't have <laughs> real trouble with that. I think it was like people were, okay. oh, this is, oh, what's going on here? You know, so. Um, how does it well, because you really, you really take charge of the stage. I mean, she comes up with the goddess and the accordion. Yeah, I found that it absolutely was difficult. You have to have an angle. They always say you got to have a gimmick, and that's what, like, Phyllis Diller was so outrageous. It, uh, as a female comic, you really do, <laughs> you have to take charge of the stage yeah. really right away mm -hmm. because there is a mindset of a, and often the people introduce you. It, it, in the old days, they would then go out of their way to introduce the male comics and then they would be almost insulting when they brought out the women. So you kind of had to overcome that. Yeah. Um, and I started as a teenager, so I didn't dare go to the clubs alone. Yeah. My, my managers came with me. You're like really brave. Wow. Uh, I think those days are gone, aren't they? It's it's Hopefully. better now. I, a lot of the female comics I talk to, they're still having trouble with with male comics, with club owners, oh, with people's attitudes. Sure. It's much much better than it was. But yeah. that's yeah. why that's why there's so many alternative venues. There's things like Uncabaret yes. and different theater groups and things where people are doing and stand up as storytelling or right. more theatrical. Or you could do your one woman different. show where you yeah. you don't have to you know everything you know and you, you see that your life. a lot of women will do it to have more control over the situation because the standard joke 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 comic 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 it can be really rough depending what city you're in a woman like you have proven that you can be as funny as anybody oh yeah and we made it even in the worst room as with oh, Joan, yeah. <laughs> Joan Rivers and oh yeah and Wanda Sykes who's a oh, I'm a big Wanda fan Sykes. yeah Wanda we love Wanda Sykes and by the way she has a great film career Really? She, she does. She's oh, very you don't know. She was in. Uh, she was in Monster in Law. She played uh, Jane Fonda's assistant. Well, anyway, well, we heard to talk about us. So no, wait, wait. Yes. Yeah, have to have her on Absolutely. as a third one because we love her. Okay. Yeah, we love her. Okay, we're running out of time. Oh. Last word. Do you have a favorite joke? Uh, one of the things that I find goes over very well is. I talk about the fact that I'm very popular in France, but you see, it's because in France they, they don't think Nellie Olson's mean. They they think she's French. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah, because it's true. <laughs> and and, 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 and you have, have yes. Uh, uh, well, you know, I came out and uh, I would say one of the center points I talk about men and women. So one of the things I say is, how many of you pig? How many of you ever started dating some pig because you were too lazy to commit suicide? <laughs> so, yeah, that's... Well, thank you. Thank you both. You were wonderful. That was well, great. Thank you. We had fun. Do I need to go to so Vegas? Good I, need to go to I would yes. love... Oh, and my awesome. God. Comedy happened tonight. Oh, Never had there been such a... That session. was Beethoven's fifth, was it? That was. That's it. Party in France. Yeah, party in France. Yeah, How's that? Yeah. Right? In your party into France. Party in your pants. We're right here having fun in France. <laughs>